before we pray i just want to mention to us one thing the man of god the apostle paul said in this last days many will turn away from the truth and they would love to hear fables I'd like to just read that scripture before we pray and turn to God's word uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4 well, the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. The time will come. They will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. You know, I am reminded of these words spoken by the man of God, A.W. Tozer. And I want to quote it. It's hard for me to accept the fact that it is now rare for anyone to come to the house of God with God completely down head bowed and silent confession dear lord i am ready and willing to hear what you will speak to my heart today this is what the man of god says he says it's hard for me to accept the fact that it is now rare for anyone to come to the house of god with god completely down their defenses let off in other words head bowed and with silent confession dear lord i am ready and willing to hear what you will speak to my heart today. Then he goes on to say, we have become so learned, so worldly, so sophisticated, so blessed, That word blase, blase means unimpressed with or indifferent to something because one has experienced or seen it so often before. So he uses that very strong word. He, he, he says, we have become so learned, so worldly, so sophisticated, so blessed, means so unimpressed with or 
indifferent to something because one has experienced or seen it so often before. So bored, he continues, so religiously tired. So religiously tired. That the clouds of glory seems to have gone from us. That the clouds of glory seems to have gone from us. You know, and therefore, I want to just remind ourselves, remember, we have come to the living God. Lord, I am ready to hear, willing to hear, what you will speak to my Heart today. Are we so learned? Are we so worldly? Are we so sophisticated? So blessed that we are unimpressed? Or we are un in indifferent? Because we have heard this word. We often, we have seen things or read things. Are we so bored? So religiously tired? That the clouds of glory has departed our lives. You know, I really thank God for this man of God. Whose words are so relevant for the times in which we are living. You know, so it's my prayer. The Lord will really help us this morning. As we come to the Lord. To meditate upon God's word and hear from him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for granting us this precious day. In your great mercies, you have given us yet another opportunity, O God, to come to thee and to thy house, the house of the living God, to meet with the one who is true and faithful and living. We thank you for granting us moments of worship, times to bring our confessions, our adoration, our worship unto the Lord this morning. Thank you for ministering to all of us as we waited in your presence, O oh God. Every ministration of thy spirit we have received into our hearts, Lord. Lord, as we come around your word, it's our prayer, O oh God, that in your great mercies you will quieten our hearts. That you would help us to detach ourselves from everything that is around us. That in humility of our spirits, Lord, we may come unto you, that we may be taught of your Holy Spirit, Receive those things. Your Holy Spirit would bring to our understanding. Help us therefore to be actively alive to the work of thy Spirit this morning. 
to the whisperings, to the nudgings, to the enlightening work of thy Spirit of God. That we may not be so learned We may not be so religiously tired We may not be so blasé Help us God this morning That we would experience the power of your Holy Spirit in our lives. Help each one of us therefore. Oh God help us. You are the living one. You are God of resurrection. Lord, we also pray at this time for all my brethren who are interpreting into different languages and pray for myself. We are in need of your anointing, Lord, and your grace upon our lives. We therefore humble ourselves once again And lift up our eyes to the Lord that you would favor us. Pour out your spirit upon us. Grant us words, expressions that we need. We pray for your Lordship to be over us, Holy Spirit. And grant us that liberty we need this morning. That your word and your counsels may reach us in the power of thy Holy Spirit. And therefore, Lord, we yield ourselves to your Lordship again. Help us, sustain us by the power of your resurrection power, by the power of the Holy Spirit in every aspect of God. Is our humble prayer and submission to you. Thank you, Father, for hearing us and answering. And in Jesus' most precious and matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. We thank God for His precious word that he is ministering to us week after week. And I personally thank the Lord for the way the Spirit of God has been helping me in my own life in the light of the present word. As we read, let's just turn again to the book of Hebrews, chapter 10. Hebrews Verse 31, to save time. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. And as we heard, these words were spoken to the New Testament believers. Who are saved by the grace of of the Lord Jesus Christ. This was not written to those who were living under the law in the Old Testament 
The burden of the Hebrew writer was this, that these ones who have been washed by the blood of Jesus Christ experience the forgiveness and salvation in Christ Jesus may not in any way disregard that salvation that is to bring them into the full salvation. They may not disregard the work of God that has begun in them that it may also come into its completion. Great warnings are seen in the book of Hebrews and we have no time to get into those. But there's a great warning for the New Testament church, the New Testament believers who are neglecting this, say, great salvation. These words were spoken to believers from Hebrew background or the Hebrew church. These words were written to them saying you know in chapter 2 of Hebrews we read like this how shall we escape the apostle includes himself and he says how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation which at first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by them that heard him speaking about the apostles how shall we escape and the Hebrew writer says therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard Lest any time we should let them slip. And he says again in verse 2, For if the word spoken by the angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape? Again he is speaking relatively about what happened. And if that is so, how can we escape today? And in chapter 10, verse 29, verse 28, 29, He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much sorer punishment, suppose ye shall he be thought, un, uh, uh, thought worthy who had trodden underfoot the the Son of God, and that counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing, and had done, and had done despite unto the Spirit of grace. For we know him that hath said, Vengeance belongeth unto me. I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. So, dear brothers and sisters, may God really help us to understand the burden of the Holy Spirit in writing this letter to the New Testament believers in the first century and how relevant it is for us today in these last days you know so we heard we need to realize we have come to the living God we heard very clearly we this is God's basis of his working and that is the power of his resurrection he is alive so we thank God for all that the Lord has been speaking to us week after week. So the word of God makes it very clear to us. We have come to the true and the living God. We heard last week, we have not 
We are not to reckon with people with teaching or some places or anything. But we are to reckon with God. If I refuse the truth, I will not be able to reckon with people. If I refuse the truth, I will not be able to reckon with people. If I refuse the truth, I will not be able to reckon with people. If I refuse the truth, I will not be able to reckon with people. If I refuse the truth, I will not be able to reckon with people. If I refuse the truth, I will not be able to reckon with people. If I refuse the truth, I will not be able to reckon with people. If I refuse the truth, I will not be able to If I am unfaithful in any way, we need to realize we have to do with the living God. It's not with men, and this is primarily something the Lord wants to bring to us. We have come to the living God. He, his basis of oh, working is resurrection. It's life. Hingat pagi oy budni, masidi ahing bani. And that's very very important. We also saw from the book of Joshua chapter seven how Achan tried to hide things and how God brought it out. God would have spoken to Joshua about it. And quietly gone to his tent. But we see the mind of God here very clearly. That He wanted all Israel to know that He is a living God and nothing hidden from His eyes. He wanted all Israel to know. And God's principles of working, the basis of His working, is life, resurrection, life. Anything that God to do, death, God will deal with. God will work upon. So we know, we heard very clearly in a detailed way about what happened to Achan and how all Israel was affected by one man. And perhaps he thought he can never be traced down to his death. But God did search that one man down. You know, in all that we see how God works. You know, God is jealous over His church. As the Scripture says in the prophets, He will serve Jerusalem with a candle. You know, He will search. He will find out. He will cleanse His church. And washer of every film. That is God's desire for His church, and He has determined to bring her to that place, as we know. Hallelujah. We also heard last week, very very clearly, that it's not a matter of. That we have to reckon with the leaders. Many a time we are found in that realm. But we need to know the final analysis. It's a matter of reckoning God as a living God. You know, it's not therefore. We don't care for the leaders. There are people who live in that realm. It's man's opinion. This is his teaching. This is his interpretation. And we need to remind ourselves as well that we cannot get away that way from the Lord, from the living God. Because the word that comes to us is not from man. It comes from the living God with whom we have to do. So we thank God for everything that God has really ministered to us. You know, we heard very clearly 
that he knows everything about us. Where can we hide from him? He knows my fam family life, my personal life, my secular life, my professional life. And when I see one thing in all that God has spoken to us, even last week, I can see the love of God visiting God's people. He doesn't want to leave us to ourselves. But certainly he wants to cleanse and wash the church of Jesus Christ in this end times. And I thank God for that work of the Spirit that he has begun in our midst and in our lives. As I said, with much fear and reverence I shared the word last week. And I stand in the same Fear within my heart and reverence and fear in my heart as I proceed further this morning in our meditation. So it is with the living God we have to do. You and I are dealing with the living God. As we heard, it's a, such a comforting thing to know. Our God is living. Very comforting thing to know. That. At the same time, we also need to know that He is also a God. And it's a fearful thing to fall into his hands. So there is nothing secret, nothing hidden, nothing that we can cover from him. We cannot take a false position. Many a time we are found in a false position. But remember, we can never take a position like that before. There is a living God on the spot all the time as we know. We saw from Psalm 139. So let us set aside every self-deception, put aside everything that is a falsehood. Let us face things knowing that our God ever lives. And that's one thing I would like to once again remind us, you know, it's a terrible word for those who fight against God. But it's a very comforting word for those who really love God and want to walk with God. Very comforting. Very encouraging. I want to move on today morning again. You know, when we see this so real in the midst of God's people who are serious in their salvation. What we see today in the world out there is, you know, the world is going its own way. When we look at the history of man, it has been centuries of war against the living God. Centuries of war against the living God. And when we look at the times now in which we are living, every effort in the planet Earth today, every effort by nations today is to throw this living God out Nothing to do with this living God. To get rid of the living God. This is the effort of every nation, every country. This is the effort of man on the planet Earth today. 
to have nothing to do with the living God. Whether it is in the personal life or in the national life. There are nations that claim themselves to be Christian nations. But every effort is being done by men to throw this God out of their nations, national life, and personal life. I want to say God will judge the nations. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. As they see in the book of Revelation. They will ask Revelation the rocks to fall on them. They will have no escape. As we read in the Gospels. For the fear of things which are coming. I want to say one thing. Do you know what is happening? I want to say one thing. It's a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living God. And therefore I would like to say in the authority of God's word. He is not an imaginary God. As many think. He is not a traditional God. He is not God of the religious system. However, ancient and all the histories may be. He is not God of the religious system. But he is the living God. I would like to say in the authority of God's word. He holds the nations in his hands. He will judge the nations. It's a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living God. You know, therefore I would like to say today to God's people, to myself and to all of us, we cannot resist God. Is there someone amongst us who is resisting God? Is there someone amongst us who is fighting God? Is there someone amongst us who is rebelling against God? And imagines in his own heart or in, own, in, in her own heart that what is And thinking within himself or herself that I can get around God despite. That I can get better of God despite. And I would like to say honestly to such ones today it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. You know, don't think we can change God's mind. Don't think we can get around. You know, may God really help us, my brothers and sisters. As I said, with great awe and reverence, I share this word with all of us today. And therefore I want to say one thing. Can you 
Rejoice in your heart that you are in the hands of the living God. It's a direct question that God is putting forward to all of us. Can we rejoice that we are in the hands of the living God? And I want to say that there is no need to be afraid of that. That therefore, this is what David said, I would rather fall into the hands of the living God than to be in the hands of men. And I want to say, may God bring us to that place that we would have that joy of being in the hands of the living God. You know, it's a blessed thing to be in the hands of the living God. It is something that can be enjoyed as we look at the men of God in the past. As we heard, it's such a comforting thing on one hand, but it's a terrible thing on the other hand. But for the believing, for those who have been bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. For his true disciples. It is a matter of joy. And rejoicing. That we are in the hands of the living God. But for the unbelieving. The unfaithful. It, it, it's neither a welcoming thing nor a blessed thing to know that they have to do with the living God. Oh, may this blessed assurance come into us that it's a matter of joy and rejoicing that we are in the hands of the living God. And therefore today I want to take us a little further. As we heard, faith brings us into the basis of his working which is resurrection life. You know where everything is living. That's what a resurrection talks about. Everything is living. Hallelujah. As I said, can we rejoice that we are in the hands of the living God? It is something to be enjoyed by His children. That our God is a living God. You know, and thus, it brings us, you know, to a place of a living relationship. You know, the, the joy of, you know, being in the hands of the living God is that it speaks about a living relationship in our lives. You know, as we have heard so many times, he's the living God. The fact that he is the living God is intended to bring everything into a living state amongst God's people. Everything is to be brought into the living state amongst God's people. 
Everything takes its character from the Lord. In this very sense. Everything takes its character from Him. And the truth that He is a living God. That means that relationship that we have come into when we were born again that is intended to be a living relationship. Hallelujah. I, I want the Holy Spirit to come in. Oh, that we make the that the Lord may help us to quieten our own spirits. Quieten our hearts. That in humility we may hear his voice today. That relationship that we are come into him. Come into with our Lord. When we were born again. When we were raised up to life. That is intended to be a living relationship. It is so sad that today. Many preachers preach Christ as a commodity. A thing. Rather than a person. Instead of presenting him as a person. And coming to Christ is a relationship. There's a distorted gospel that is being preached today. The scripture is very clear. He that had the son had life. It is his person. As many as received him, it's a matter of him. It's a matter of a relationship. We were without God and Christ in our lives. But we who are far away are brought nigh by the blood of Christ. We are now part of the commonwealth of Israel. We come into the family of God. Oh, everything, every scripture points us into one thing, a relationship. That relationship is intended to be a living relationship. It is sad. In many lives, it's no more a relationship. Because the relationship is almost dead. Many do not care about that relationship. This relationship with the living God in our lives run in so many directions. It runs in wide range. And if we really look into those wide range of things or this relationship that run into many directions. If we are honest with the living God today morning. If we are honest with the Holy Spirit who is given to us to help us. 
We will realize that it's not a living relationship in many directions. In many areas. The scripture says Christ is the head of the family. Where is his headship? Where is God's government in the family? Husband does one thing, wife does another thing. Children do something else. I'm not talking about unbelievers. I'm not talking about the churches. I'm talking about ourselves. Is there a livingness of his headship? This relationship. Runs in every direction. It runs in, in, you know, in every, it, it comes into every area of our life. Now, I want to say one more thing. And we need to acknowledge this. With the help of the Holy Spirit. Accept. Consider our worship. Do we worship the Mukta Wakalto? There is a form there wherein we accept that our God is a living God. It's a form. We accept that religious form. Which says he is a living God. Therefore, we may not have any objects before us. We have no cross, we have no images, we have nothing. But the question is He is there a livingness in that worship? Is that relationship there? Or it just something that is being spoken, you know, doctrinally amongst us? There are certain religious rites connected with the living God. We may be involved such as giving to God tithes and offerings perhaps the table of the Lord many rights many things we are supposed to be doing and the question is that there are so many things I can bring in but I'm just bringing one or two just to remind us is there a livingness does it speak about a relationship in your giving to God is there a relationship there in your singing in your worship in your coming to God's house whether you are physically coming to the house of God or you are Meeting with God in your own house. Attending to the virtual gathering. virtual gathering. Do you honor and respect Him as a living God? Or you are happy you are away from the past and the leaders, the, the physical gathering so I can be whatever I want to be? I can lie down I and relax. I can be in any posture. 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 My dear brothers and sisters, God is speaking to 
those are open to hear. Mahak putazan ing dunah hangtok libas sing da ishwan ang ang biri bani. Don't be angry with yourself. Forgive yourself. I see by the spirit that some of you are angry with yourself. Kanagumba kare di masada sao raga lay masada sao jo dunah lay. And you're angry with others. Na koi na ato pasing dusu sao ri. And you're ultimately angry with God. Adugamama itang da ishwan dani na koi na sao raga libado. May God deliver you today. You lost a joy. You lost a smile. Nangi harau nungai busing ado ariam batahan kere mang manghan kere. You become a form in many things. Ram kaya ada nahak mawang matogi oibu tu kagto orang kling. It's God's love that is coming to you today. Adu bungasi nangu anda lak piri busi isor gini nungsi bani. To deliver you to set you free. Nangu kita nangu thado pina nana bagi dah makta lak libani. Love of God is knocking at the door of your very life. Nangu kita thong da yeri bani. Let him bring to life that which is dying. Oh may God help us. Let us look at our devotion. Oh may God help us. What measure? We have the acknowledgement of God in many areas of our lives. I could give you a few examples. The Kayamuki Matang, the Isorga, I could give you a few examples. I could give you a few examples. The Kayamuki Matang, the Isorga, I could give you a few examples. The Kayamuki Matang, the Isorga, I could give you a few examples. If you're honest, I'm sure. I'm sure. The Holy Spirit will be right there on the spot. Awaya, asyeng bana. Maafam itu makta da nang ayu puteng bang bina na bagi da makta laygani. We will see. Jengani. Many things are short of a true and living relationship. Many things are reduced to a form in our lives. Can you be honest with God today? Can you be honest with God today? Can you be honest with God today? Koi isor do pukcel ting na lai bang ambra ngasi ki matam ngasi ki nomit sita. When we say that He is the living God, I say hingli isor ni hai na koi na hai ba kan sita. What He says is, those who have related to Him should live. Mas mas sita mahak na hari ba sidi. Mangu anda mari lai na kraba mahak na hing ba oi kada bani hai na hai bani. By saying that He is the living God, it simply means that those of us who are related to Him should live. Those of us who are Those of us who are related to Him should live. Those of us who are related to Him should live. Those of us who are related to Him should live. Those of us who are related to Him should live. You know what He says in John chapter fourteen. John kita ramai dah mahal na highway ribu sih kari. Gospel of John. Apa ba wapau hi John. John chapter fourteen. John ki tarah mari, panduk tarah mari, panduk tarah mapan. Yea, a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me because I live. Ye shall live also. Ay hing ba maram na na koi na su hing gani. Hallelujah. Because I live. Ay hing ba maram na. Ye shall live also. Na koi na su hing gani. It's a clear-cut indication. Because my ek la na ten tak na ekoi da kangen bi bani. That a living relationship with God is possible. Because the hingli ba isor ga bari na ba hai isor itok pa ya bani. I shall live. Aine hing ba maram na na koi na su hing gani hai na hai. Hallelujah. All those who are related to Him should live. Mohon da mari pi krabo ni pung kuding mak hing ba oiga da bani. I know the most of us who are hearing this morning the word of the Lord have this knowledge that our God is a living God. And we also 
have a living relationship with the living God in some measure. Machang kara da di ahing bagi mari ase ekoi lay. Machang kara da lay. In some measure, in some areas, sometimes, but God's desire in sending this word is that we may come into the joy and rejoicing that we are in the hands of the living God. Because He lives, we shall live also. We will come into that living relationship with the Lord in every direction, in every area. And it's my prayer. That we all would desire and say, Lord, bring us to that place. And we can do that because we are in the hands of the living God. That we may experience the Lord coming into closer touch with our innermost being. That we may experience the Lord coming into closer touch with our innermost being. Innermost being that he knows me more than anyone else. Not just in saying, but in reality. Not just in saying, but in reality. Remember. It is not a relationship with somebody who died. But it's a relationship with someone who is alive. And it's not a relationship with someone who is alive. But it's a relationship with someone who is alive. But it's a relationship with someone who is alive. It's not a relationship with some dead order of things. But it's a relationship with someone who is alive. But it's a relationship with someone who is alive. But a living person. How important it is. When we come into corporate worship. When we come into worship. Or that God would deliver us from every mentality and attitude. We should not just say. We are not coming into an order of things. Not order of worship. Not order of the other day we went to meet a person and he said, you know, virtual meeting is going on because there's no physical gathering. So, you know, as we do in our church system, we gather together, somebody does this, somebody reads the epistle, somebody reads the gospel, and then somebody has the prayer. You know, uh, the order is followed. And when it comes to a preacher, we thought of going to the net and get any preacher. When we used to go to our physical gathering, we hardly used to get a word because the preacher that is set there, he, he doesn't really speak. So we can choose great men of God like Billy Graham or any such men. So order of things are going on even during these times of lockdown where we have no permission to come together. Order is followed. We can also be trapped in those things. God is sending this word because he loves us. The Lord said to the churches in the book of Revelation, You think you are alive, but you are dead. Oh, may God help us.
Our relationship is not with some order of things. This is how we do. That this is how we are told. Oh, there's a great deliverance. Here. In our choices, in our decisions. In our priorities, if we ever realize what we have to do is with a living God, things will become alive in us. Why in our priorities God is at the last? Why in all our decisions we discuss or uh, we go to him at the last? When we are unwell and sick, why do we go at the last to God? That's where we must go first. You need to trust him more than your doctor. You need to trust him more than your health system. You have to have faith in him more than in your bank balance. We can be so living with our bank balance, our investments, our savings, how alive we are. But I want to tell you, He is our inheritance. He is our reward. The relationship. Maria do. That's what the Lord said unto Rabuna Abraham. Abraham da I am your reward. I am. Aini. Not the land that you have possessed. I am. Aini manado. Not even the son that I have promised. I am your reward. reward say. Aini. Aini makni reward. My brothers and sisters. Aini nukshira bai sinu nao sing. This relationship is a living relationship. It is not a doctrinal relationship. It is not just a legal relationship. Many live by that. I'm born again. I'm a child of God. God is my living God. You know, I'm legally His. He is mine. But there's no living God never intended this to be a legal relationship. But He wanted this to be a living relationship. Multitudes of believers today are living in a legal relationship with God. But there's no living relationship with the living God. Oh, may God help us. 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 Is he looking for legal sons? Those who went on by the legality of things. God said God can raise up children from even the stones. He wanted living relations. Oh, may God help us. My dear brothers and sisters, And may I ask you, as much I ask myself, have you that living relationship? Have you that living relationship?
in every area of your life my life this is very important very very important brothers are you following a system are you following an order niti niyam amabu paring amabu tungi libra i can say standing here aina mapam sida le plaga hai je wa ngami by the spirit of god sing bagi mapan na iswagi thawai gi mapan na many many have lost kayana that lively relationship with the living god ni iswar ga leina ba mari ado manghan khre dead sire In many areas, there is no relationship with the living God. Kya ada ahing ba mari oid lai nadre he? Hingli ba isorga? Don't be trapped by or trapped into the legal relationship. Ayen ki mari adul ki lang da thu halagano. There are people who came and said to him, "Lord, Lord." I want to sum the lack to the Prabhu, Prabhu. He said, "I never knew you." I never knew you. 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 You call me Lord, but you did what you wanted. Ayna di kauraga na koi apa am bato dum tauning bato ta tauraga lay. There was no relationship. Mari di layte lay na dre. Of a bridegroom and of a bride. Boram di kai na galay na kada bumari di layte. There is no place for my headship over your life. Nangi punsi da aigi makoko koi bagi jagat nang na thamde layte. You never reckoned that you have to do with me as your. Your bridegroom. Nangi bore oi na aiga chatha mina gada bani hai na nang na khan kiba laite. Wakal tau kiba laite. It was all centered around yourself, your satisfaction. You want to do. You did. Adu ni. And I want to ask you this morning. You did. 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 Or are you in living relationship with the living God? Matra ganahak ahing ba mari ama hindi isolga nangi mai punsi ki mai on kuding magta naihal libra lainari libra. The Lord desires. Kung una pamli korangli. That we have such relationship with. Mahak ka ikoy ka madugo ba mari yado lainaba yana na bagi dam magta. A relationship that shall be living all the way long. Matam sang na lain raga dawa Maria do. All the way long. Matam sang na. This is what he longs. Masini mahag na palm libase. Mahag na khorang libase. Matam sang na lain raga dawa Maria do ni. Many a time. Ayam matam dadi. Many a time. Ayam matam dadi. We see this. Ako na masisi nga si ure. You know, sometimes when he talk to families, people say, "The husband says, 'I'm doing everything for her. I'm doing this, I'm doing that.'" And the wife says, "I'm doing this, I'm doing that for her." Doing things can be a routine. Things that you do. Things that you do. But there is no relationship between the husband and wife. Matayong marakta mar marie di lain adre, marie madi thamdre. I've come across those things many a time amongst God's people. Routine 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 routine
we have been doing we are uh, we are to do it so we do it that doesn't mean relationship Oh may God deliver us brothers and sisters activities would not mean livingness it doesn't mean that we have a living relationship with God it can be a form of things it can be mere responsibilities routine of things that we are used to these are not signs of a relationship oh may God save us today if we hear his voice if we hear his voice If we hear his voice Let's not harden our hearts Let us 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 not harden our hearts It is not a small thing. It's a great thing. It's a great privilege. To know that you have an access to the living. As we read in Hebrews. We can come. In the time of our need. To the one who is able to. Sucker. Hallelujah. You know, many people in the world do not know which God they must go to in the times of their need. Let the last week somebody was asking someone, "Which God must I go to in the times of their need?" Let the last week somebody was asking "Which God should I pray?" Let the last week somebody was asking someone, "Which God should I pray?" Let the last week somebody was asking someone, "Which God should I pray?" Let the last week somebody was asking someone, When people do not know where to go, which God to call upon? Isn't that a great thing? 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 What is to be done? Well, you have a living God. You have the living God. We can go to Him. We can ask Him. He is open. He is accessible. Many a time we have closed the door. Our logic and reason has put the shutter down. We have shut him out. By our reason, our logic, our intellect, our education. Our mentality. We have put the shutter down. Which was open. He is open. He is alive. He is available. You know one thing. You don't have to take an appointment with this this living God. Hallelujah. Today everywhere for everything. Taken appointment. But here is one. Twenty four seven accessible. One who is living. We are not talking to an automated machine. We are not talking to a system. We are not talking to a digital uh, uh, When we are tired today, you call anybody, any call center, you are in line, you are in waiting. This is your number. 
are not tired because you want to get your job done. Wait 30 minutes. The line gets cut off. You call them again. You are in queue. Sometimes the queue doesn't go short, but it goes longer. Beyond your logic. But here is a God. There is no line here. There is no queue here. There is no waiting here. In that sense. But the excess is available. 24-7. He is excess here. He is open. He You and I can have our dealings with Him. Isn't it a matter of rejoicing? Amen. Isn't it a matter of rejoicing that we are the hands of the living God? Oh, I wish some of us would say, Hallelujah. And bless the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. He is there. He's available for us. And we have an access to him. Let me read this scripture from the book of Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 14 to 16. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into heaven, Jesus the Son of God let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities but was all in all, but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of his of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. We read another episode. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God. There is no time limit given. Let him ask of God. Let him ask of God. Hallelujah. Let him ask of God. It's available to us. We have dealings with the living God. He is accessible. He is open. He is available. In other words, he says, Come my children. Enjoy that living relationship with me. Come the door is open. Enjoy that living relationship with the living God. This is how, this is what He wills. This is the will of God for our lives.
And let me tell you in one sentence. sentence the desire of God's heart is that you and I should treat him as being a living God. The desire of God's heart is that you and I should treat him as being a living God and live in that living relationship with him at all times, not at chosen times. Matam puna makta khando akla ba matam da khakta na tab matam puna makta hingli ba ishwar amadai ko na tauvo gum na tauvo do adoni pamli ba mahakachatham ina ba again the Hebrew writer says in chapter eleven some nahareg lay and verse six panduk taramathoi gi pada taruk asidai da which scripture we all know Hebrew da some nahareg lay ko na loy khanda ra ba thastani some nahai but without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to him must believe that he is and he and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That diligently seek he is the reward of them. Who diligently seek him. He that cometh to God must believe that He is God. That He is, as we saw before. That means that He is as He is. I'm not getting into many translations for want of time. We have seen the scripture many times before. Must believe that He is as He is. No change. As the eternal one. And not only that, as he is, he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Rewarder. What is that? Let me just read one or two translations. Because Verse 6. But without faith it is impossible to please and be, sat and be satisfactory to him. For whoever is amplified, for whoever would come near to God must necessarily believe that God exists and that he is the rewarder of those who Earnestly and diligently seeking reward that he is a rewarder of those who earnestly and diligently seek him. I like to read from NLT. It says, uh, and it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to Him must believe that God exists and that He rewards. He rewards. Like to read from NCV again, another translation. Without faith, no one can please God. Anyone who comes to God must believe that He is real and he, that He rewards those who truly want to find Him. He rewards. What does that mean? We seek Him. We come to Him. So when we believe and come to Him as He is, that he is there. Without faith it is impossible to please him. And he that cometh to him must believe that he is. Amen. Amen. Whether it is in your prayer. It's your devotional time. Or when we come together for worship, he that come up to him must believe that he is. You are not coming to face to face with an empty space.
You are not coming in an open universe. You're not coming in an empty universe. You are not coming to an empty place. How important? How terribly deceived we are. He that cometh to him must believe that he is. He is. And he is as he is. He is the reward. Means, when I come, I am coming to him. He is there alive. I have access to him. He is there for me. He is there to hear me. Without faith, it is impossible. To please God. That he is there. My brothers and sisters, we are coming to a living person. We believe that he is. And there is nothing vague about it. But the Hebrew writer underlines one thing here. Anyone who comes to God must believe that he is real. And he is rewarder of them who diligently He is rewarder of them who diligently seek. You know, every time when I come to the Lord. I must have this assurance that He is a rewarder. Hallelujah. He is a rewarder of the who diligently seek. How far? Does your faith carry you? That's a question that we all need to answer. He is the rewarder of them who diligently seek Him in faith. It's impossible to please God without faith. How far does your faith carry you? How far does your belief carry you? Nangi Tazabana Nangu Kayam Lapna Pubira Bagay Kayam Sang na Pubira Bagay. How far does your faith take you in seeking God. Many a time we are limited. Many a time we are limited. Are we persistent in our seeking? When the Son of Man comes back, will he find the faith, the persistent faith we heard about? Diligently seeking. Oh, it's my prayer. The time is running out. May God really help us. If I don't stop here, then it's difficult to stop even after half an hour I would rather stop here. Oh, may God intervene in His great love in your life. And I want to tell you, it's a matter of joy and rejoicing that we are in the hands of the living God. Because He lives, we can Oh, may God help us. 
Are things reduced to a form in your life? As a joy that we are going to We have the living God. It's a matter of joy and rejoicing. We are in the hands of the living God. He wants to make everything living in our lives. A relationship that's living, not living. And it's my prayer. It's my prayer. I'm sure the Holy Spirit has pointed finger at some of us and our situation, our relationship. With God, with one another, in the family. There's no living. It's mere formality. Form of things. Not legally. Not legally. But living. A living relationship. May God deliver us today by the power of His Holy Spirit. I would stop here. How far will our faith carry us? Let's stop here. May God bless you. Thank you for your attending. And the relationship with the living God. Shall we all stand up and speak? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. 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 Thank you for God today or will everything be just a form of things even today and God is merciful he can turn everything dead into life today that's the basis of his working the the base of his working is the power of resurrection You have an access, but we are put shutters. He becomes the last priority. We go to him at last when everything else is not working out, then we go to him. That's not a living relationship. Living relationship tells, go to him first. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. May God deliver us today by the word of God. He has sent the word to deliver you and me. It's a terrible thing to fall into the hands of the living God. But I want to tell you. It's a joy and rejoicing. To be in the hands of the living God. On the other hand. May God help us. May God help us brothers and sisters. Let things which are dead and dying come to life again. Let the power of resurrection come in. Let's truly repent. Be honest with God. That things are more legal and not living. Form of things. Hallelujah. Give place to him. Let's humble ourselves as we prayed right at the beginning. Let the word and the spirit of God quieten our hearts. And bring our spirit into humility to receive his living word. Refuse not the light. Be obedient and see the salvation of God today itself in your personal life, in your family and other areas of your life. He is accessible 
available 24 7 what a relationship but it should be living that's he's that's what he is looking for his desire is that hallelujah and he's rewarded he's rewarded he will reward you yes are you diligent are you diligent about it he is rewarded heavenly father we thank you for your precious word we thank you lord for your love that is visiting us today we thank you for your word that is able to deliver us oh god help us to humble ourselves, repent and be honest with you, Lord. Help us to let down our gods, Lord. And bow before you as the man of God said. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. That's the prayer of my heart. Lord Jesus. Many things are reduced to form and order. Life is ebbing out of many things of God. It's no more living. Whether they be relationships. Things in the family or outside. Personal life. Lord. Help us Lord. Help my, help my brothers and sisters. Lord, this relationship with you will be a matter of joy and rejoicing because it's a living relationship. Bring us to that place. To know that you are there. You are there, Lord. More than any man Oh Lord, you can be closer to any man in our life. Help us, Lord. Holy Spirit, we want to submit to your ministry in our lives, which is to reveal the Son unto us. Because he lives, we shall live also. Hallelujah. We shall live also in that living relationship with the one who ever liveth. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, surrender our lives to you this morning. In the light of your word, Holy Spirit, help us. In our prayer, in our submission, O oh God, we want to remain yielded to thy spirit and to thy word. In the coming days as well. We thank you Father. We thank you. For your mercies. Your visitation. In our lives and in our midst. Change us. Transform us. Deliver us from everything that is of the self. Bring us to the reality of the lively relationship with you and with one another in the body of Christ. Thank you, Father. Give you the glory. Give you the praise. Continue to abide with us and lead us and guide us this week and help us to gather in thy house again to continue to worship you and to meditate upon your word. Thank you, Father. Bless you with all our hearts. In Jesus' most precious and matchless name we pray. Amen.